going to climb a tree. Watch out. Ah! Hi there. Welcome to another episode of the Board Game Business Podcast. My name is Richard New, and I'm here, as always, with Jeremy Commander and Brian Hink. Uh, we're going to be talking today about the top ten mistakes that uh, new designers ha- make. And we're going to talk about it from a uh, publisher standpoint with Brian. Brian's made a, a nice top ten list for us. So, Brian, what is your top in fact, let's go backwards. What's your number 10 uh, thing that a new designer does wrong? Um, a new designer should not make an Apples to Apples clone. Or Cards Against Humanity, where you have just like a deck, a small deck of cards, a big deck of cards, and you like have a judge, and it goes around and you just like say what you put down one card that says, I think the judge is going to laugh at this, or, mm-hmm. you know, it's, uh, it's, it's know. been done. Yet another yeah. Cards Against Humanity game. Yeah. Because Cards Against Humanity has made so much money. Exactly. It's been so successful. And it has reached so many different people. You know, like people who don't play games, like yeah. they, they they often start uh, at least getting back into games by playing something like it, Apples to Apples or Cards Against Humanity. And so they kind of think that's how a game can make it. And that they might start thinking about it, too. Like, oh, I can do that. Mm-hmm. I just have to, like, write a bunch of cards out and, right. and make a bunch of money, and that's it. And there's a bajillion clones yeah. or add-ons or taken yeah. off of that. Yep. So, we yes. We got to number nine. Number nine. Um, <clears throat> so they, they make a game that they want to play, but nobody else does. So this could be someone who... Um, maybe they're really into ants. They really <laughs> like ants. They have their ant farm, and they just make a game, you know, about an ant farm that is just like goes into the different types of ants and different like what mm-hmm. the queen does, and it's just like just like nobody cares. No one wants to play that game. <laughs> There's probably uh, better examples too. Um, um, I think gameplay this. length can kill people, too. So you come by in this game, oh, this game looks interesting. You know, tell me about this game with the theme. You're exploring underwater with a submarine. I'm like, oh, yeah. oh that's cool. How long does it take to play? Oh, two to three hours. I was, I was at a pro spiel one time, and uh, a, a designer that I, I – he's done some other stuff I like. I like his games. He had a game. They're like, what's this one? So, oh, it's a deck builder where you're a corporate executive. You know you're going to get fired, so you're just going to try to build the biggest golden parachute for yourself you can. <laughs> I thought, that's hilarious. I love that theme. And I like deck building. And like, how long does it take to play? Two to three hours. Like, yeah. no, I can't. I can't stay there for two to three hours. You know, I just can't. I can't yeah. do it. So I'm about to be fired for two to three hours. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right. That is my number five. Oh yeah. So that that I completely agree. It's, with that. Too, it's long. too long. Gotcha. Yes. All right. Well, let's go back to number eight then. What eight. Do we have for us um, there? It doesn't have much replayability. I think that's a common one. Yeah. Um, so you might play it once or twice, and like, hey, that's kind of cute or. Clever. If there's sort of one ga- way yeah. the, the game sort of comes out and, and resolves itself, yeah. Yep, yep. It's just kind of the same thing over and over again, mm-hmm. you know. So you um, can bring it to a new group of people, and they will enjoy themselves. Uh, but if it doesn't have, uh, it doesn't make you want to play again, like, right away, and if it doesn't want to make you want to play again next week and next month, then it's not going to do very well. Okay. So. And, you know, to bring out your prototype, to you, the people have oh, grown, ugh, that again. <laughs> or people are like, oh, yeah, I'd play that again. And if, yep. you get, if you get a game, if you get a prototype to the point where people ask to play it or mm-hmm. ask to play it again, mm-hmm. then you know it's turned the corner. That's really a really great game. And the only game, so I have games that they get that to some level. They get some people asked to play it. The only game I get, like, all the time is, like, Pass the Paint. Like, like people I've forgotten and played this game, a year later they come up to me like, oh, hey, bring that painting game. I want to play that game again. Mm-hmm. And so you know that, that you've kind of you've hit that level where that it's a really good game. It's nice that there's a lot of strategies that you can try and yeah. a lot of different paths that you can take to victory. And, I mean, that's that's nice for replayability because then, oh, last time I tried to collect, you know, just yeah. a large number of one color. Now I'm going to go the entire rainbow and just try to do it through uh, the commissions or whatever they were. But And that will get me to play again again if there's definitely multiple paths to victory. Like, oh, I, you know, I, I optimized over here this time. This time I'm going to go the other way and just see if I can win on, you know, pure money or whatever. Right. And that, that I like that a lot. That will get me to keep playing the game again if it has some replay value that oh. that's similar to my number six yeah i remember yeah we were <laughs> so, up. i was like we're coming up on one from your list right, not right. just one way to win right yeah. just one it has one ultimate strategy that you use every time um so that that's a common mistake i see too where you play a game and you know it seems to you know pretty much work it looks all right but, but if then you don't you play know, a certain strategy yeah like you gotta like, go the boat strategy every time you just have mm-hmm. to 
and and if somebody beats you to it, you know, or somehow takes takes it over, you just don't have a chance to win. So something like that. That it's just a, a broken game, and it, it makes people mad when they get down when they figure that out. And there's like oh, there needs to be more play testing at that point for yeah. the, the balance of the different. Yeah, more strategies. play testing, and and then just but also just realizing that that happened. Like mm-hmm. my game only has one strategy. Uh, we have number seven here, so uh, it has too many components. So I see that a lot. You know. I'll sit down to play a game, and they say, here's your player mat, here's your hit points, here's your pile of chickens, Here we all wear hats, <laughs> so here's your hat, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it just like goes on, and I'm just like, whoa, I got a lot of stuff here, and we got custom dice, and we have yeah. Yeah. Uh, just so many different things in there. Uh, Games with economic systems in them usually have lots of resources and lots of mm-hmm. you know different tokens and everything to sure. represent those things. Mm-hmm. They don't... I, I'm sure they don't fall into that category for you, but often when I see a game like that, it, it makes me go, eh, maybe I should find something else, because I feel like there's a huge learning curve. It's, they, a, it, it's a turn-off for, for yeah. publishers, because they think, oh, oh huge turn-off. yeah, I've got to make you know this many decks of cards, and right. I've got to do chipboard, and i got to do dice, and i got to do tokens or chips, mm-hmm. and the manufacturing cost spirals in their brain. Mm-hmm. I mean, one of the ways you can test this, you know, do this my game of too many mm-hmm. components, go to the Game Crafter, Put your game in with all the yeah. components, and then see what the 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 build price and the suggested MSRP like is going to be on the Game Crafter. And if your yeah. game comes up to like ninety dollars on the Game, <laughs> game Crafter, it's got too much stuff on it. Yeah. And getting a publisher to, to do it is going to be very hard. And selling it on Kickstarter is going to be very hard because the the cost is just going to be too high. Mm-hmm. Building on that, I also don't like games that. Uh, too, too many components have multiple randomizers. Like, oh, we have decks of cards that are random, and we have a chip pull that's random, and we have dice. And I've seen games that have all three random mechanics in the same game. And I'm like, why do I need to ha- deal with three levels of randomness mm-hmm. in your game? That's just going to drive me insane. Mm-hmm. And you've tripled your components. You have so many different components there. So we've talked about number five. Yes, we've talked about we already did six long. as well. So six and five, we're down to four. Okay. Uh, too complex. So this is just uh, uh, a game that you play, you know, hundreds of times yourself mm-hmm. with other people. You understand it. You designed it. You know it so well. It's sometimes hard to realize that nobody else will. Mm-hmm. So that we that recently played a game that uh, the suggested, but I don't know if we want to mention it, but the uh, what it was, but the suggested. We'll call timeline. them out. Should we call them sure. out? Sure. Okay, they, right they made a lot of money. Okay. And they they said in one of their updates they're they're working on improving that because they got feedback now from the outside as more people have played it. The, and, the and they, they got my money. I, I paid the money. I, I, I could. I have. I paid money for it. Right. I've heard the, the suggested right time was 45 to 60 minutes, right? Yes. Okay. And we played for three hours, and we were a little more than halfway. Maybe, maybe 60% done after yeah. three hours. Yeah. But you didn't, you didn't say what it was. Uh, this, this is Mega Man the board game. Okay. So here's what I'll, I'll say about Mega Man the board game. I backed it on Kickstarter years ago. They had lots of delays, mostly related to licensing and manufacturing. Uh, and the uh, license games are hard in that respect. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it has a, it has a ton of components. And the complexity was it was pretty high with all the different things that happened. And it had multiple randomizers, both cards and dice. Mm-hmm. Kind of the, one of the classic mistakes there. And... Uh, it felt like a Mega Man video game. I love the Mega Man video games. It was it was good Ameritrash and that I felt like I was in a Mega Man game. Right. I was collecting powers and going through the level and using energy and that was I mean the feeling of the game was was great. If it was, you know, a third of the playtime, it would be better. And we all we hit this randomizer problem, we'd go to the boss battle, and the beating the boss was just rolling the dice and getting a certain roll. You had mm. to roll it's a six sided die, Kay. only one face. Would help oh, you beat the boss, okay. and your cards didn't really help you there. Mm. And you know, maybe you had a power that would help you from another boss, maybe. Yeah. Uh, right. And so it was just, it was just okay, random. Let's try again. Roll a bunch of. Tra- oh, you made it. Or oh, you didn't make it because the sure. die screwed you. Sure. And now you go back, and that costs you another fifteen minutes. Oh boy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so that uh, that that lots of components of that. So that, that I'll, I'll give them a, it's the pros and cons. There. It feels like Mega Man. And you know that feels like that's the game that really needs like a, a second extension or an expansion type thing. We're like, oh, we kind of learned some lessons and cleaned it up. Mm-hmm. It, for in for complexity, you know, it's it, it, games like um, uh, Terra Mystica, maybe uh, things that. Um, you, if you sit down, like you need to be a hardcore gamer to have a chance. Mm-hmm. Uh, where a lot of people, the first, it'll take maybe a couple games in order for you to feel comfortable playing and really knowing what the objective is. Uh, so games like that um, are 
usually a bad idea. You're targeting a really small group of people. You're going to have a, a much larger group to of people. They play the epic long game. Yeah, the, you'll have a much larger group of people who are going to sit down and really not like your game. And, and this is a common myth in board game circles. You go to your board game night, and the guys that show up every week are the most hardcore board game people. And they want to play the big, long, two-hour game because mm-hmm. that's you know that scratches their itch as the super gamer. Yeah. But those guys are a fraction of the market. They are the tip of the iceberg. I mean, mm-hmm. the, the, the large market is the more casual player. Mm-hmm. And if you have a game that plays in under an hour and it's easier to learn, you're going to sell more copies of your game. So are you going to appeal to that you know top 10% of gamers, or are you going to try to go for a larger chunk? How I test this complexity thing is how long does it take to explain the rules? And if it's over five minutes, then I'm going to get nervous. And if it takes more than ten minutes to explain the rules, then your game is probably too complicated for something I'm really going to enjoy. I'd rather play three other games in the same amount of time span. All right, we're getting to my top three. Here we go. Number three, <clears throat> it's not fun. <laughs> there are games that work. They're really well balanced. Uh, you can sit down and play it. They have rules. They have a winning condition. You can play through, but you sit there and it's you're doing a math problem or you're mm-hmm. basically organizing a spreadsheet of uh, of powers. I or... feel like that's where the game that I'm designing is right now. Mm-hmm. It's like I had. Yeah. It's it's a fun idea. I explain yeah. that okay, the idea is this, and people are like, oh, let's play that, you know. Mm-hmm. And then we get in there, and it's like, okay, how does this work? I got to add that, and I got to, you know, it's yeah. it's. I try to simplify right. it down too, like for just symbols. But it was, mm-hmm. ju- it's, it's gotten to the point where it's just sort of like it's just about, yeah, adding up numbers and yeah. comparing them, and it's, it's like, yeah. well, this is, doesn't feel like I'm doing the thing. Too much bookkeeping will keep you. Like, yeah. I, I did a dice game with my design partner. I hate dice mm-hmm. as a randomizer. I'm more of a card guy, mm-hmm. and so he's been pitching me dice games for years now. He sends me, sends me the outline. This is the dice. No, no, <laughs> read it. no. This way I don't like it. No. So finally, he sent me like this. Look at the third draft for this particular dice game. I'm like, well, this actually sounds pretty good. I'm going to try it. And we tried it, and the core mechanic of the game is fun, but there was so much bookkeeping of, like, tracking your points and rankings and all that stuff that it it killed the fun of the game. All the bookkeeping work in the game, it it made it just too much work to play. Most games that I see that are, you know, like, as far as, like, keeping score, like, on a pad of paper, uh, work best if it's, like, at the end of a round. You know, if you're doing it during the middle of the round, it takes away from gameplay. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the round or at the end of the game, if you can just sit there and add up everything and you're good to go. The other thing that I would say would be unfun for me, that's not like Matthew or anything like that, would be if I don't have anything to do on my opponent's turn. Mm -hmm. And you go around the table to eight different players and I'm just sitting there. You know what? I'm going to go over and get myself another drink. (laughs) You know, I'm going to go to the bathroom. Right. I'll come back and it still won't even be my turn. Right. You know, that is a, that's not a fun game. Yeah. No simultaneous play. Wait for your turn. Yeah. Yep. I agree with that. Number two, uh, it doesn't let the player make interesting decisions or choices. So again, this is another kind of case of the game works, Mm -hmm. um, but... Uh, it's I kind of just always do the same thing, or maybe I draw a hand of of cards, and it's just like, well, I play the high card, uh, or right. I play the low card, and then I play the next lowest. It's just like I do have I could play the high card, but I know that's not going to give me the best chance to win, <clears throat> so I'm always going to keep doing this, mm-hmm. and you just keep making the same things, or maybe you have, do I go white or do I go black, and like I guess I'll go black, but it doesn't have much of a an impact on the game. Yeah. Um, and or or it's just like uh, okay, I have to discard a card now. Discard a card. Uh, but if if it was like I could either discard a card or spend gold uh, or <clears throat> maybe move my truck up one spot, you know, like then it, it gives me something like hmm. Now I can I can do a lot of different things. It's not. You know, you did kind of make me... And, and it can't be a false choice. It has to be a meaningful choice. Yes, the choice yeah, it really like, does. Ah, yeah, like, what I mean, am I do? Yeah, people like that. They like to choose between things. Mm-hmm. And not just kind of do like, well, I guess I do that again. Number one. Number, number one. Number one, it's not unique. Yeah. So you just take... Uh, I play the game, and although I'm playing a game that's different, maybe the mechanics are different, or this combination of mechanics are different... But I feel like I've played this before. Mm-hmm. That That's what uh, I, I've seen oftentimes in games, too. We could go back to number 10, where it's the apples to apples. You know, you can do any variant of that you want. I'm still going to feel like I'm playing apples to apples. Uh, and Or you can even take, you know, the auction system from Raw. You can take the the uh, the deck building from Dominion. You can put it together. Uh, and But if I still feel like I'm playing kind of one of those games or both of those games, I've already had Dominion's this Dominion's a big one. I, feel, I want I, a new one. A lot of deck building games don't do anything 
past essentially what Dominion does. Yeah. And so I, I feel like yeah. uh, every whenever someone's like, hey, play this deck building game, I'm like, okay. And then we start, and it's like, okay, so essentially I'm just doing Dominion. Dominion okay. with a new theme. Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. a uh, new twist on it, but yeah. still. Yeah, it's just Dominion. Building on that, it's it's not unique mm-hmm. in, in that I would ask you as a publisher, because I've heard conflicting views of this, and different publishers like it differently. Mm-hmm. Some publishers like when you sit down and explain a game to them that you compare it to other games. This is like blah 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 and blah 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 mixed together. We have like mm-hmm. this from so and so, like this with so and so. Some publishers it's easy like to that. Pitch a movie that way. You yeah, know, this it. is this meets this. That's how movies work, right? Yeah. They're all they're like remakes and rehashes of things because that's how the market works. And I've had other publishers say, "Don't do that at all. That's just a turn off if it's like another game." Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so, as when someone is showing you a game, do you like it if they compare it to other games or no? I don't. Um, if they do mention that, if they say, you know, yeah, this is like Carcassonne, then I am going to compare it to that as I play. Mm-hmm. But that's probably not a good thing. I want I want a new experience. Uniqueness sells, especially for a company, you know, that we're still mostly based on Kickstarter for beginner and for to see if a game is good enough to, to sell. You know, we'll start on Kickstarter and you need a unique game. That's the most important thing about it. And so that's what I want. So if I think this is just like Carcassonne or too much like Carcassonne, I'm not going to touch it. Okay, well, thank you guys for joining us this week. Uh, that was Brian's top ten list. Next week we'll be back with Jeremy's top ten list. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll let the listeners decide and the viewers decide. Uh, I've been your host, Richard Noon. I'm here, as always, with Jeremy Commander and Brian Hink, and I'll see you across the table someday. Hey, this is Richard to remind you that you can check out our website at boardgame.business. Old episodes are indexed by subject to make finding an answer to your question easier. You can find links to our BGG Guild, other networking sites, and, if you feel like support Supporting us, our Patreon account. Donations are used for equipment to improve the presentation of our podcast. Thanks for watching or listening. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.